Hi there, year 11. Um, I'm here to have a walkthrough and talk through of the Unit 1 exam paper, giving you some of the tips and ideas of how to approach the exam from the point at which you go into it until you leave. So how to use your timings, how to approach the questions, and making sure you maximise the marks. And that starts really with the minute you get into the exam. Now I've checked with our exams officer and she says that as long as you're not writing, you know, you've turned over the page and sort of writing in your exam paper, that you can write on your candidate form that you get on your desks. So you might have an A5 or A4 bit of paper that's got your name and candidate number on. So you could straight away start putting down some language features because you know you're going to end up using those for question 4 and for section B. Um, so things like DeForest if you've learnt those, um, if you haven't done that system um, you might have another one that your teachers taught you. Alternatively what you might have is just a quick mind map of some of the terminology that you might need to use. It's a good way just to kind of um, straight away focus your attention on what's going to happen in the exam and what you need to do and it avoids it being a dead time, a panicky time where you're just watching people come in and thinking everyone else is more prepared than me, um, you know, this is your exam. Another thing to do is to have a think about your timings. Now it's a morning exam, you're probably going to get started about nine o'clock. So again, on here you could have a quick run through figuring out what your timings are going to be in the exam. Now Question 1, which is obviously two parts, question uh, 1A and 1B, you're going to spend roughly 15 minutes. And 15 minutes for question 2, a bit more for questions 3 and 4, 20 minutes. And we know question 5 is 25, question 6 is, if I can write numbers properly, is 35. So I would be doing something along the lines of doing a bit of maths here, working out my timings so that I can keep referring to this as I go through my paper and I'm not going to get myself massively behind and run out of time for those um, big blank questions when it gets to the end. Now here we go, let's see if my maths is actually any good and I can do these timings. Um, there we go, so that should take us to help me um, ele um, 10.55. This is the pressure of doing this and filming it, you see. I would be alright at this normally. So that should be till um, 11.30, which is too long. Why have I done that wrong? Oh, you see, I'm done here. Forgive me, guys. I'm not going to restart this. But there we go, 9.50, 10, 10. I was thinking this doesn't look right. 10, 10 to 10, 35. There we go. 10.35 until 11.10 and that's going to leave you about five minutes um, to check over your work so forgive me on those timings but you might want to just do that at the start of the exam before anything else okay so the invigilators have said to you right turn over your paper oh you can start by putting your names on um, and suddenly you hear the rustling of pens so we're going to you know you're obviously going to fill in your paper as you would with your, your centre number and all the rest of it but you can whilst other people they might be taking quite a bit longer than you you can go back to this um, you can think about any more key terminology you want to put on. You could even um, write some reminders on the front of your exam paper if that works for you. Obviously not going into the examiner's box. Okay, so we've used a bit of time at the start of the exam. So we now need to think about how we're going to approach um, how we're going to approach this paper. What's our first step? So uh, walk with me if you've got it in front of you. It would be really helpful if you've got the November 2013 paper. So I want to take you through the stages of this exam. Okay, first things first. We're going to look at the very first question. Now, your invigilator might say to you, which is sometimes not very helpful, they might say you've got 15 minutes reading time. What I don't want you to do is get a panic about this. This exam used to be two hours. AQA realised that wasn't long enough, so they stuck in another 15 minutes of reading time. Now that is to be used for you to read questions, to read the extracts, at any time, at any point over your exam. Sometimes I've been in the hall and seen students looking around nervously, like, mm, can I start? 
you can start as soon as you're told, told that you can open your booklet. So don't feel like you have to wait for that 15 minutes to pass. Right, so we're going to go through this step by step. And our first step, step one, is going to be not to read any extracts, but is to read a question. So it's always based on source one, but let's just remind ourselves of that. Um, and so read source one, the online article, how Harry almost lost his ears conquering the poll, and answer the questions below. So straightforward, 1A, list four things you learn about Prince Harry from the article. Okay, Key bit in this is what we learn about Prince Harry, not about the expedition, not about um, the charity that he was that he was with but what have we learned about Prince Harry this is the only time students sometimes come a cropper on this question is when they um, is when they kind of haven't read the, the, the question carefully enough so step one we've read the quest through the question so obviously now our our next stage our next step is going to be to look at source one okay and we're going to try to extract that information we know then in step two that we are looking for information about Harry now obviously I know this text pretty well as you might expect um, so I can skim and scan very quickly and see the prince is third in line to the throne okay so I can see that fairly fairly quickly you should have a look at this paper as part of your revision see see how many different uh, bits of information about Harry you can find sometimes I even number them um, although you don't need to okay so that's our second step what we want to do then is go back to our exam paper for step three. Fairly straightforward. We are just going to answer the question using probably bullet points or very brief sentences. We don't need point evidence to explain and neither do we need lengthy answers. Remember we're looking for facts here about Prince Harry. My top tip as an examiner is if you've got time to stick down a fifth and maybe even a sixth bullet point. The reason for this is that the examiners will mark your best for, okay, not your first for. And when grade boundaries are six marks, uh, you know, one or two marks, it's heartbreaking to miss out on a C grade by, by just one or two marks. So if you've got time, sit down fifth and sixth bullet point. So that's your third step of this exam, writing those down. Okay, step four. We're going to go through in a really logical order, as you might imagine. We're going to look now at question 1B. Um, so this is often the what do you understand, or sometimes it's, um, it's phrased as what do you learn. Uh, and in the context of this question, it is what do you learn about the expedition that Prince Harry went on. So let's highlight the keywords in this. It's, it's about the expedition Harry went on. Sometimes students respond to this by talking about, um, you know, talking about the North Pole, talking again about Prince Harry himself, when the question is obviously wanting something a bit more precise than that, it's wanting us to focus on more specifically the expedition. So this was our fourth step to identify what the information we need. And so we return back to source one. Okay, so this is really step two and step five, because now we're going to look for the information that we need about the expedition. Okay, so we're going to have a look and see what different information we can find out on this. So um, let's have a look and see one of this. You know, here we go. Arctic remains the most dangerous places on Earth, where they can turn in seconds. Now, um, I've made a bit of an error here in highlighting this, unless I can link it to the expedition. So I kind of fall into a little bit of a trap that some of you might do. I'll go right, here's something I've learned, here's something I've understood. But is it about the expedition? That's the question. Um, better would be to have found something like this. Um, that it was, uh, there was a group of injured soldiers and servicemen. Now that's something much more precise, isn't it? That That is about the expedition itself. That on it, were injured soldiers and servicemen and that these were people were injured in Afghanistan. So that was my fifth step. Coming back to my exam paper, step six is going to be to write my response. Now, with this being um, question 1B, what do you understand? Well, what I understand is that I'm going to need to do two point evidence explains 
in order to get the four marks that are available for this question. And my point evidence explains will need to include inference. Right, so this is something I'm sure you've done a lot with the teachers who won't dwell on it, but it does mean reading between the lines. So if what I know about the expedition is that it was a group of injured soldiers, servicemen from Afghanistan, what have I learned about that or what do I understand about it? Well, if you're an injured serviceman, uh, an injured soldier, and you're undertaking an expedition as challenging and as difficult as this, then I'm going, to in, I'm going to infer from that that these people are brave, that they're committed, they're dedicated to raising money for the charity. That's the kind of things we would want to see in this response. So explaining what you've learned, obviously using quotes, and then your explained part must incorporate an inference. Okay, so that's step six, writing of the response. Okay, so we're 15 minutes into the exam now. Let's move on to step seven. Okay, be prepared for several more steps. Um, it seems to change every time I do it, but it's up, it gets up to about 23 or 24. So uh, we, are, we have a few to go. Right, step seven is going to be, you can hopefully see that there is a pattern arising, that what we do is we read carefully step seven, uh, pardon me, we read carefully um, question two, make sure we know exactly what information to look for before we start reading the source. So this is um, going to be source two, it's an extract where Ben Fogel describes the training he and his colleague James went through before undertaking a race across Antarctica. So what do we understand about the difficulties they faced in training for the race? Okay, the difficulties they faced in training for the race. That's the key things that I'm looking for. So, obviously what we do now, I'm sure you can sort of see this pattern arising now. Step eight is going to be to read and highlight, isn't it? It's going to be to um, find that information. Okay, so the difficult, what am I looking for again? I've completely forgotten. The difficulties they faced. So I can see stuff straight away in this first paragraph. Um, now, here we go. The cold cut through. Uh, my bones ache from the chill. Well, it's pretty clear how um, difficult, unpleasant, and at times dangerous this, um, this training was. Uh, so I would approach this in the same way that I had done 1B, looking for that information. Okay, so we can go back to our paper. Step 9 is going to be to write my response. And I would be aiming for three point evidence explains, four if you can, but three good point evidence explains, that's going to get you a C. So why, why do more than you have to, in a sense? Um, don't spend endless, endless amounts. Eight marks, that's great. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes. Um, key for this question is that we must include a developed inference. What does that mean, I hear you say? Well, what that means is that as well as you structure for the last question, you're going to say what else might it mean so a sentence started something along the lines of this could also suggest blah 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 because because my favorite words for this question because you've got to go into a bit more depth and tell me the reasons why okay so three point evidence explains and we're moving on now to everybody's favorite we're moving on to the language question. Okay, so step 10. Although lots of you will know pretty much off by heart what this question is, let's remind ourselves we're looking for language features. We're giving examples, which means quotes. And this, which is my little C grade bullet point, explain the effects. And please remember to explain the effects of the quote, not the features. Um, I'm sure your teachers will tell you, but there's nothing more degrade than a student saying the writers to use alliteration. The effect of this is that it sticks in the reader's head. Ah! Okay, a little bit of examiners dies inside when they see that. What you've got to do is say, what's the quote? Where's the alliteration? What um what 
effect does that actual quote have on me? Not the alliteration, um, but the quote itself. So um, that's, the, that's the key to getting a C grade for this question. So step 10, we look at this. Now we remind ourselves that we are going to look at source 3 for this one. It will always be based on source 3. Oh, and this is the cute text. It was the polar bears that are like disappearing. Um, so we can see straight away, it's a good idea to think about purpose audience format of this because we know it's a persuasive text. It's about adopting a polar bear and, um, and you know, donating money ultimately. So step 11 is going to be to sort of read, obviously, and to highlight good examples, ones that really stand out to us. Um, now again, I know this text fairly well, but for the for the for, you know I'm going to read it through. You can do that. Um, so I know that here we've said it talks about the ice, and it says that it is thinner and more treacherous. Now I know that both of those are adjectives. Now they are describing words, but what's the effect of those particular words, those adjectives, that it's thinner and treacherous? Well, the effect on me is to shock me and startle me because obviously the problem with the melting ice is far worse than I might have imagined as a reader and maybe I also feel sorry for these little polar bears and other creatures that are you know, like losing their homes and what have you so the effect of those quotes is to shock me and to startle me so we will look for a number of different uh, quotations like that and then when we go back to our um, booklet step 12 we're going to Write it up, and we're going to aim for something like four point evidence explains. Trying to cover a range of features if at all possible, certainly making sure we use quotes. And this explaining the effects. I know I'm going on, but the effects. And I always, you know, say, how does it make you, what does it make you think? What does it make you feel as a reader? It's basically what we mean by effects. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and focus on for question three and we're going to spend about 20 minutes on that question okay moving on step 13 it's question four this is probably a lot of students um, second second least favorite does that make sense um, again it's a, an unpopular question quite often because of the element of comparison um, which does make it a little bit harder admittedly so we remind ourselves that step, um, the question four is always going to get you to look at two texts sometimes they tell you which ones sometimes they'll give you the option but you are going to compare presentation explaining the effects and comparing the way they look now effects is just like with Q3 what do you think what do you feel so you're covering that it's a very similar kind of explanation of effect as it was for question three now they're going to they're not going to be horrific to you the examiners they're going to give you texts that have got elements of presentation they're going to give you ones that have got images um, such as these two texts so what you now need to think about is how are these two texts similar and different how are the effects on me as a reader similar or different? What does it make me think when I look at it? And which one is maybe more or less effective? So step 13 was to look at the question. We're going to try for this question to do a little bit of a plan. So step 14 is to plan. So text one, or excuse me, it should have been source one, shouldn't it? Look, they're always going to give you an image. They just are. They're not going to not do that. There's always going to be an image in the text. So I would always start with image. And a bit like that creepy um, game show catchphrase, you need to see what you see, see what you can see in the picture. So if we take the Harry picture, um, I'm going to be talking about the body language of the prince. The fact that his head is down. He looks like he's really having to trek through the snow. Um, and also it's just, it's a bleak kind of environment, um, just loads of snow and ice, um, loads of slow, snow and ice, and that it looks quite hostile. So what's the effect on me as a reader? Well, maybe I feel sympathy towards Harry because he's hard going, 
maybe I'm um, maybe I feel that he's quite heroic for what he's doing as well um, if I then have a look at my other text I'm going to focus on the main image here I'm going to focus on the polar bears now as you just look at that I mean although it's a kind of photoshopped one it's a kind of computer generated image we've got this tiny bit of ice you've got a bear and two cubs clinging onto it no ice surrounding them and you've got like the baby bear and it's hanging on almost falling into the sea um, and it's sort of it's really emotive from that point of view nothing else the sea looks quite dark as well and quite sinister we'll come to color in a second so I think here about my other image well what can I see I can see the the, the bears um, again it feels quite a bleak and hostile environment for them it doesn't feel like they're safe and protected and that they can survive in that okay what's the effect for me I feel really sorry for those little bears yeah, I know I'm a bit of a soft touch when it comes to that but you can tell that the intended effect given that they're trying to um, get people to adopt is obviously going to be to create that sense of sympathy so really this would be my first point of evidence explained wouldn't it one has got an image what can I see I can see this this is the effect second one's got this and they both have a they both have this sense of creating sympathy the best students will evaluate and tell me which one's best so you're going to do definitely one on image and then probably what you try to do the same with is something to do with maybe color but it could be a second image it could be a logo could be other presentational features you've covered in class um, and we think if we're talking about color about things like symbolism I mean look at this text with the red all those connotations of danger how he's in danger here you've got the color of the ocean being quite dark and sinister they're in danger again so we could definitely do something with color and think about effects there okay if you're looking to get a C what have you got to do? You've got to make sure you've got at least two comparisons. And my examiner and a tip to you is rather than try and cover 52 different presentational techniques is that you do something really decent on image and read something really decent on colour. If you've got time, something else. So step 15 is going to be to write it. Okay. Moving on quickly, largely because my battery is just about to die and I really don't want us to run out. So step 16, we have moved on to section B. So we're halfway through, more than halfway through our exam. So step 15, okay, key things for us is to establish the purpose audience form. Why are you writing something? Who are you writing it for? What are you writing? Okay key thing that you'd make sure you've achieved that step 17 is going to be to do a brief plan now you're probably aiming for three paragraph uh, beg your pardon five paragraphs in 25 minutes so quick plan what are you going to put in each of those paragraphs okay and um, step 18 is to write it this could even just be a mind map of or a word explosion doesn't matter too much about about um, five paragraphs your purpose is always going to be describe inform explain for question five okay I've got four percent of battery so let's hope we get this done step 19 do the exact same with question six work out your purpose your audience your form okay make sure that you know exactly who you're writing for, what you're writing, and the, and the purpose. Definitely do a plan for this question. Look how many marks it's worth. Don't run out of time for it. And you're aiming for something like seven paragraphs. You might use a boxing to argue, which I'm going to do a separate video on because I'm definitely not going to have time to go through that now. Um, but watch one of my other videos on this and uh, get yourself up to speed with it about seven paragraphs loads and loads of persuasive techniques so step 21 is going to be to write it okay and step 22 
Remember at the beginning I said you should be left with about five minutes. You're going to check over your work in those five minutes, make sure there's no basic errors and you'll be done and dusted with a C grade in the bank and you can feel confident come August. Okay, best of luck guys and um, just remember, follow these steps and you'll be absolutely fine.